welcome, welcome, welcome to a one-stop shop with Microsoft One Note. I love it. I always want to learn more and more and more about all tech. So I'm so, so happy for today. Who am I? I am Dr. Desiree Alexander. I am the founder and CEO of Educator Alexander Consulting. Um, this is all, these are all of the ways that you can contact me. If you're watching us on the YouTube video, if you go right underneath the video, you'll see the resource for today. So make sure that you click the details underneath the video to get the resource. And no, you can't get a certificate, but you can get the knowledge. Yay! So let's talk about some webinars we have coming up next weekend. We have You Can Teach an Old Dog New Tricks Using Google Apps. And I think we have like 80 something or 90 people already registered for this one. So make sure that you get registered and hold your spot. So that is next weekend. And then we have, this is a brand new webinar. So we added it, but it is coming up very quickly. And that's celebrating growth over grades using spaces. And the cool thing about this is I saw, of course, like, first of all, I absolutely love Melody. We're friends, like, you know, spoiler alert. But I saw her teach this at TCEA and I was like, yes, 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 yes. Please come do this for our webinars. So I'm so excited. Definitely register for this one. It was, it was really more than I expected it to be. Like I thought it was just going to be like just tech, tech, tech. But man, we talked about, you know, grace and growth and celebrating growth. Well, I mean, just like what's in the title, celebrating growth over grace. And we talked about a new tech tool. So I was, I was overwhelmed and uh, like very happy about this session. So she's going to come teach it and I'm very happy. Yay. But brand new session. So make sure that you register for it. And then we have SEL, Teaching Essential Skills for Tomorrow's World, the next weekend in March. It's like every weekend we have an amazing presenter. And then we have collaborative storytelling with elementary. And if you haven't played with elementary, it sounds like it's just for elementary, but it's not. Um, and it's an amazing tool that you can create books and you can create um, choose your own adventure stories and all this stuff. And your students can create. And then there's a coding aspect to it that you can code. Like it's just, it's just like just you gotta come see it. Okay. And then working together with Wakeland from Leticia. Woohoo! There's so much. I just can't wait for every weekend. It's like a party for me. Nurturing a linguistically inclusive learning environment with Carla. Can't wait for that one too. Equity and instructional, I thought it institutional for some reason. Instructional coaching, uh, May 7th with Victoria. And again, if you haven't seen Victoria speak, have you lived? I don't know. Um, so leveraging YouTube for learning. Again, another one that's kind of new and I'm loving that we're going to be talking about YouTube because so many people are afraid of it. Um, so loving, loving, loving it. Then I am going to be at ISTE. ISTE is going to be in New Orleans, everybody. If you didn't know, now you know. So cannot wait. I'm on the I'm on the um, planning committee and just a great group of people all trying to get ISTE live in 2022 all together for you. And then we have Emerge Students in Learning. And you may be like, that's a different picture, but that looks like the same lady. It is. It's Rochelle. Rochelle is awesome. Uh, so she's going to come back and talk about AR, VR. And that's something that, again, a lot of people don't play with just yet. We want to get more into it. So let's do that. And then I do have a VER session. And this is a paid session. But if you're in these areas and some of it is going to be virtual now. So you want to go ahead and look into that if that's something that you're interested in. And then this is another one specifically for ELA teachers. Again, these are paid, but something that you may want to look into if you're interested. And all of it is on the same link at the same website. Oh, that's where you speak so fast. I know because you didn't come to hear me. You didn't come to hear me. You came to learn about OneNote. So let's get started learning about a one-stop shop using OneNote. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nalan Taylor. That was such an amazing introduction. There's so much stuff to do with Educator Alexander. <laughs> so I hope you guys can tune in. Um, this is one of the resources or the main resource that you will receive today talking about Microsoft OneNote, a one-stop shop for pretty much everything. I'm looking at this notebook now or OneNote inside of the desktop app. But when you click on this link, if you want to open up the desktop app, you can, and it will look like mine with the tabs and everything at the top of the page. But if you're looking at it from your end, if you do have that link later on, you'll be able to see it look like this with the tabs on 
the left hand side and sections and pages that way. So I'm going to leave it like this for a little bit and then I'll probably toggle back and forth so you can see each one. So thank you for joining us this morning. I'm so excited to be able to present again with you. Again, my name is Nalan Taylor and I am an educator in Louisiana. I teach high school Spanish and this semester I also have a web design class, which is a little bit exciting and interesting at the same time. Uh, I've done multimedia stuff all the time or years past I did with my school and helped create a newspaper and whatnot. So it's a little different bringing some things back into the fold. Uh, but one of the things that we constantly use is OneNote. So there's another little about me tab. I would love to be able to connect with you. So um, do that, uh, reach out on social media. Um, this is also one of the other great things about building your PLN and community. And I see one of the ladies online joining us, always very supportive, which is Stormy. And so thank you very much to her and for everybody. Thank you all for spending your Saturday with us. This Microsoft community is huge and it is expanding and it is you know, one of the things that we all glean off of each other for. So I have the honor again of being a part of this cohort number seven, and it represents five different states, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Texas, and Oklahoma. And we are expanding. So this is us down here. And Louisiana cohort is getting bigger. Uh, cohort number seven in general is getting bigger. And we would just love to continue to get more people into the fold to build our professional learning community. Uh, one of the sites that you can also follow or links that you can also follow is on Twitter. So um, M-I-E-E -E, Louisiana. There's also, which you'll probably see later on, I'll take it out of there or build a little later, is you can see M-I-E-E -E, um, Flopsy, which is the main, um, how do you call it? The main, it's not the logo, it's the llama, <laughs> but it's the spokesperson, so to speak, for MIEE, -E, right? But I just asked permission to be able to do one for Louisiana because I wanted to grow this cohort specifically and just get the conversation going about all the amazing things that we can do with uh, OneNote or all of Microsoft EDU tools. Uh, these are other ways that you can keep in touch with me via Twitter. Uh, this is the one that I have for my students. This is my personal professional one. Instagram, usually try to post a lot of stories and things there. You'll see like you have here way more content. <laughs> and then if you follow us on Snapchat, you can do the same there. Just trying to figure out different ways to be able to meet new people and get my students rolling and using the target language and, you know, developing in their technology skills and social emotional learning skills. I uh, also have a part sometimes on Thursdays to be able to um, moderate or facilitate a language chat. So those are some more things that you can see and, um, you know, get to know about me and connect. So let's come on back. I just wanted to let you know also at the end, you can go into what we call the MEC Center, the Microsoft Education Center, and use this achievement code. So you'll be able to tune in a little bit later on, uh, redeem your code if you're a part of that. If you haven't signed up for it, this is a website here, education.microsoft.com. Um, and some directions are here. So I basically just wanted to give you guys steps on how I'm using OneNote and how it's been beneficial, but then kind of like walk you through everything that we're doing today too. So I hope you get a chance to go back into it, use it at your disposal and um, have fun. So let's go ahead and get the party started. All right. So um, what you'll see right here are the sections that we have off to the side. And for the most part, like I told you, I'm going to toggle back and forth between the web browser app that you see me using for OneNote and also the one with the tabs up at the top of the screen for the desktop app. Usually I like the desktop app more simply because you just get a lot more leeway and a lot more things to do. But I know that all of us are used to looking at, at sheets of paper and tangible notebooks. And so it's a little bit easier on the eyes to look at it this way. So um, pretty much a table of contents that I left for you to be able to see you can have things that are, or everything that we're going to cover, I kind of jumped a little piece to piece on this morning. Um, the webinar, the about me information, how I link these pages to one another, how you can go back and see them. You have those links to be able to do as well, it takes you back to the redeem code, things that are pretty simple. Um, and then we'll just talk about everything else that I can. I left a couple of bonus videos in there for you. If you were able to catch the last time that I did a presentation on Canva, there's also a little bonus part at the end that I left for you for Canva and a template. So you can go back there and apply that. But, um, you know, everything will be there. So in case you missed something in the video, you're catching a replay or you're just like, dang, where did she put that? It's definitely somewhere in the notebook. Okay. So these are 
or this really is a nice little video. I don't know if I did my volume or not, um, but you can also go back and watch this one. And it just kind of jumps in on what a lifelong community is through all these platforms that we have. We have Google, we have Microsoft, um, all these learning um, management systems or more than learning management systems, just ways to be able to communicate effectively, ways to organize. And that's really what I wanted to share with you on this morning. So jumping on to the next one, this is just another thing from the Twitter that I told you about <laughs> from the Twitter. So you can connect there as well. Um, and we join communities for different reasons, or we're a part of professional learning networks and communities and families, some people call them PLFs, for various reasons. And so for whatever reason yours is, whatever brought you here today, I'm excited. And I hope that you can glean something from this community to take you on um, in experience in Microsoft even the more or just growing in your community. So uh, just to hear back from you a little bit, what are your thoughts on what not already? What have you heard? What do you know about it? And you can drop those comments in the chat and I can give you a second or two before we kind of look around. I would love to hear the three bullets. Basically, how would you describe OneNote so far? Um, what could you do with this resource? And do you know the difference between OneNote and Class Notebook? So you can just kind of tackle all three of them in the chat and I will take a look at those as you go or Dr. Alexander will call them out as you go, however you want to do it. Um, but I would love to hear from you. So blow up the chat, please. <laughs> Tell me what it is that you know, and then I'll keep it pushing. So we have is a virtual notebook. Mm -hmm. All right, virtual notebook that it is. Digital binder. Anybody dropping in what you can do with that information? What can you do with OneNote? And what do you do with notebooks just in general? Since we see digital notebook, digital binder. I have, we have, we know, I know nothing about it. And that's why I'm here. Oh, sweet. Okay. All right. Organize so, information and use as a resource. One note is just on my computer. Honestly, uh, I don't know much about <laughs> it. So you have an, an audience awesome. that don't really know that much about it. Beautiful. Okay. Well, I like the first one. We're going to dive into all of those applications or all of those um, ideas. So using it as a digital binder, using it as a resource hopefully getting to use it more than just a little icon that's there, like what in the world is going on? I would love to share that with you on today. So basically what you're seeing for me, the, the main thing that we usually hear is that it is some type of a digital binder. And I remember, I'm gonna share this brief little you know, testimonial with you. I started probably with OneNote, I wanna say in 2017, 2018. And we were onboarded with Microsoft products. I uh, remember going to our central office and we had people from you know, the, the main company come in and kind of show us what to do with OneNote. And I remember I would always have these huge binders in my classroom for my for my world language students. And I used to just get tired of hearing, oh, Ms. Sam, I don't have that handout anymore. Or why we gotta do a binder in this class? Why do we have so many papers, blah, blah, blah. And when we finally rolled over into using the class notebook for the for our classroom, OneNote class notebook, one of the comments that changed everything is a senior, graduating senior was telling me, Ms. Taylor, OneNote is a game changer. I don't have to worry about 30,000 papers anymore. I have a notebook or I have a binder with me everywhere that I go. I can put my notes in there. I can actually write in there. I can take pictures of whatever things are in there. I don't have to lose anything. So I'm hoping today to get a chance to share with you how awesome and how powerful this one resource could be. Uh, and the way that we present it and package it to faculty and staff and to students also says a lot about it too. These are a couple of videos that I found. Uh, I like listening to these gentlemen on, or watching them, I should say, on YouTube. Uh, not the E-Twins, but they are some phenomenal guys too. But these guys, um, OneNote Aesthetics, they have, they're called Everything OneNote is their YouTube channel. And I gave you a couple of videos here and also some stuff in that bonus tab you get a chance to see later on. But they basically share with how to make your OneNote a little bit more appealing because we can use it as a resource, which I do all the time. I use it as a notebook for myself. I have to-do lists in there. I put down daily schedule things, what time I'm supposed to meet with up with people. I do reflections in there. I use it with my students for different sections of our class notebook. So 
wherever your imagination, your creativity takes you, it can be used or done with OneNote. A lot of people also have done it with portfolio. So at the end of the day, you can do a portfolio for yourself. You can do, you know, back to school or getting to know you activities. All of those things can be housed here. And so I just wanted to leave a few uh, templates for you to be able to look at. And you have those resources at your fingertips. And we're going to jump into how we can build this notebook, what kind of ideas you can use moving forward, and we will go through. All right, so that's our getting started portion. Here's the planning part, all right? Now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of what's going on and how we can kind of use it. So a lot of people have templates that are there and I'm gonna go back into our main one because I created this one for you guys to be able to see and to go off of the presentation, but I want you to be able to see how it is that I got there and what it is that I'm looking at. So we pass through this one, we're in the planning, all right, and so we're going to come here. I'm going to come back on up into templates. Okay, so use the ones given or create your own Canva there. You have to have the desktop app to be able to create the templates. Otherwise, it'll come out looking like the one that I showed you, the desktop, I mean, the, um, the web browser, which is totally fine, right? So after you create the notebook yourself and you open it up, everybody's going to see your notebook like this. They're going to see it with the sections on the left-hand side, then they have the pages inside of every section. So you literally think about it as a digital binder. These are your section headers. You can change them any kind of way you want just by right clicking on there. You can call it a new section. You can change the color of it. And obviously you can't change mine because this is the one. So that's why I said I was gonna come back into this one for you. But all you do is right click on everything and it opens up as if it were just you know a Word document. So when you're dropping things in here, let's talk about templates, for example. This is one of the ways that I would use a template. And so I would, and I found this out from Kathy um, Kurzowski, uh, which is on Twitter. She's on Twitter. And I was just like, man, I use OneNote all the time, but I never thought to build in my own page templates there. Cause I was like, I don't even know who uses that. Where would I find it? And so I gave you this um, walkthrough of how you can really get to that portion. So how to create a, a template in five easy steps using OneNote. Of course, even talking about how we're going back to this thing, let me just come back here really quickly. And when we talked about this Microsoft Center here, going to education.microsoft.com, that is where you want to go to be able to log in or to be able to find out how to use Microsoft tools. So everything is free. Uh, Office products, Office 365, all of those things are free. And OneNote is housed inside of that. So this is your go-to shop for right now, okay, until those things Kind of, kind of change places. But this is where you would want to go. You log into that website and then you begin to play around what it is that you want. So I would click on opening up OneNote, all right? When you, when you open up that small purple binder, that's the icon for it. When you open that up, it brings you here, okay? It brings you to a fresh page. You're going to design your own notebook or you're going to create a notebook. Then once you're inside of the notebook, we need to figure out how we're going to kind of make it look aesthetics, aesthetically pleasing or, you know, what information you're just going to dump into it. So really, uh, the first thing that you're going to do is come up to the top where it says page templates. So if you notice, I'm inside of the desktop app right now. I'm coming all the way over. OK, I'm going to go to where it says insert and then I'm looking for page template. All right. So here it is. So just kind of walking everybody through the same thing. Open up insert page template. When I do that now, it's going to look like this. Okay. You'll see a drop down, And I'm not sure if I have all of these on mine simply because I kind of play around with all of them and I've seen them for so long, but if it's your first time doing it, you may not have all of these drop downs come down. Right. But I kind of like to see things as I'm going. So I put this little note in there for you as a reminder to, as soon as you press on that page template button and you click on um, one of the ones that you kind of want to see because they have so many different designs. So let's say, for example, I clicked on the light bulb corner, which I really like. Okay. It opens up, like I told you there, it opens up into an untitled page. All right. So this is that untitled page that you now see that is inside of the section because you wanted to see what the page looked like. Right. So I usually go through a gazillion of them. And then when I'm ready, I kind of go back and delete them. So you have a little light bulb that is there. You have other cool templates, a day by day templates, things that are, oh, this is mine. It's my template. Sorry. <laughs> you have uh, stripes, you have designs, you have thumbnails, paper clips, whatever it is. So they kind of gave you some things to be able to play around with. Okay. Um, so now, after you figure out what kind of template that you want, 
Then you're just going to click on those page templates and you're going to save one, all right? Or save whatever it is that you think it is that you want. You can always go back and find the same one again, but I kind of just like to save it and then figure out what I'm going to put on it to kind of maneuver some things around. Um, then finally, you know, you can name it whatever it is that you want and it will be inside of your own template. So let's say I came here and I saved whatever it is that I wanted from that template, then I can go ahead and begin to build different things onto my template, right? So I shared this one with you. Let's say I like my bubbles, right? There they are. Notice these cool little bubbles, colored bubbles on the left-hand side, right? After I figure out what it is that I want, I just begin typing on the screen. And OneNote really is that easy. I'm just going to call this one. Let's call this uh, today's webinar. This is how you put the title on a page. You just type onto the page itself. All right. So I'm going to type onto the page, put today's date there, even though it already shows up. And then I just use it like a Microsoft or a Word document, a Google document. Everything is there. It's like a sheet of paper. I can type in whatever I want. Right. That's it. And this tool is so, so easy to use, but just so um, it goes, it goes with the flow, basically. So it's just like whatever you want for your creativity to be, whatever you're thinking of, you can just put it here. Just drop it into the OneNote. Play around with your fonts, play around with your colors, your sizes, make it bold, whatever it is. It's the same thing that you're used to doing on a regular document, which is on the page. And so a lot of times people build templates. I will build templates for my students and I can share some of those things, what those things look like with you. I build templates for myself. And that is what you notice inside of one of these notebooks. So if you're not using them anymore, because obviously you have the link to this one. And so I don't want to leave these undone pages in here. When you're finished with them, you can just go back and do like I'm doing, right click on it and just hit delete them. You know, just hit delete for, they, for them to go somewhere. But I did leave for you I'm going to leave that one in there. I did leave for you a sample template of what I have here. So this would be my personal notebook. All the things that I have at, at the top of the page, the sections are however I want to um, kind of put the notebook together. So your sections could include, I have a to-do list for mine. Um, I have another section that is just uh, school stuff. Like I'll just call it the name of my high school school stuff. And then I have another one that is called my own PD. So when I get a chance to come to webinars for other people or I'll go to different conferences, I have a section for that. And every page, page is over here. I just go ahead and click a new one and just start adding information on there. It could be a YouTube link that I dropped. It could be a link back to the resource that was given at that particular conference or that um, webinar. It could be uh, images that I drop. And the good thing about it too, is that there's an also an app for that. So everything that we're using on the web, there's also an application for. So you have all of those things to be able to see. You set these things up the same way that you would do anything else. You just begin to insert information. I build it by building onto tabs. So this is the one that I save physically for myself, but I will come to the insert button, hit the table, build it however else that I want, and then just kind of play around with the nooks. Now, if you don't feel like doing all that, you're just getting the party started. Get you, all <laughs> right? That's what I tell everybody anyway. However you're using it for yourself is the best thing to do. You don't have to jump in with all the bells and whistles. So I'll leave the blank page as a bonus, right? This is the bonus blank page. You can do it, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do to it. And then you just build and create, play around with whatever it is that you want. It has the tables there for you. I learned another shortcut, which I'll share with you later on, that if you just begin typing, right, here's another shortcut, hit the tab button, and then you've already got a table going. You can go ahead and build in, drop whatever it is that you want, um, say whatever it is that you want, whatever tab it is that you have happening. Decorate it. I can highlight this. I come back up to the table at the top. I highlight it with whatever it is that I want, whatever color it is, play around with it. I can even drop my little bitmoji on there, which you'll see on a couple of pages. If you have that um, Google extension on your computer, just drop it on there. But this one for students as well, you can do different things. And we're gonna talk about how I use it with students in a moment. Okay, so any, any questions so far about what is going on? Do I have any, any things churning or what it is that you're thinking about how to use it? You can go ahead and drop that in the chat or you can, you know, tell me whatever you, whatever it is you're thinking right now. Um, and I'll come back to hear that. 
So I also left for you a, a bonus page here with a couple of templates, just playing around with these. So if you click on this Canva link, you will be able to um, utilize the template that I have. Sorry, guys, I have my stuff in uh, Portuguese. <laughs> so you can utilize the template that I have that I left there for you. And you'll be able to access that information. You should be good to go. And it'll just ask you if you want to um, build on it or if you want to use it as a template. So I just left you a couple of things in there to be able to play around with, a couple of infographics. Do what it is that you like, but that's a little bonus thing for you. Okay, so let's see here. I don't see anything in there so far. No questions so far. Nothing about the chat. I don't want to go super duper fast, but some of those things you don't think about as you're designing. And so I'm sharing with you what it looks like on my end, but I didn't share with you how, the how part of it, like I did before. So building templates, um, utilizing monthly agendas, weekly agendas, and then I'll share with you a couple of examples of what mine look like, how you can even toggle back and forth to different notebooks. So let me see. So we do have a question. Can you please explain mm -hmm. how to push the pages to the students, collaborative oh. versus personal pages? Mm -hmm. So the collaborative versus personal, I love it. This, what I'm in right now, what I've shared with you is a one note notebook. This is the personal one. The one that you would need for your students would be this one up here, the class notebook. So you could build the class notebook for yourself if you've already done that. And with your own school system, it automatically opens up or it automatically gives everyone in your classroom a notebook. Once you've done that, you can click on the page you want to distribute, maybe the section to distribute, and that's it, basically. And you just highlight whichever one that you want. So you want to make sure that if you're using your own personal notebook, that you're not divulging and that you're not distributing that page to the students. But you definitely, which I do a lot of, you definitely could create your own template and then do that with them. So actually, let me go ahead and show you a live one of that, and that may be a little bit more helpful. So here are a couple of the notebooks that I told you. Like I told you, I keep one for myself, right? So if I'm looking at my own, these are the things that I talked about. So my own to-do list, school stuff, language study, my own PD, whatever sections it is that you have. Now, if I open up one for the classroom, let's just take a look at one of these templates, and I'm going to go back into the fall because those things have changed. But let's take a look at Spanish 1 in the fall. All right. Or actually, it didn't change because I changed the name. But ooh, you don't want to see that. Wait a minute. OK. Um, da, 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 da. It'll take you to, let's say, a teacher only section. Right. So here is one of the sections that I have. And this is the teacher only section, usually where I like to build the templates myself. So the one that you were just looking at was a YouTube video link that I dropped in there. And these are just some images and some tasks that I had the students do for an entire week's worth of time, okay? So you can just build stuff in there. I don't feel like coming back into the notebook. I don't feel like, you know, reinventing the wheel. So if I wanted to share this with my students, I'm inside of the notebook where I wanna share it from. I'm just going to share this one page, okay? So distribute the page will be up here. I'm going to click on I wanted to go to a different notebook. So that's, what I'm going to say cross distribution. If this were the same notebook that I'm using for my classes, because you can see the name of the notebook is third block, right? Spanish two for third block. Let's say I don't want to send it to the ones in my third block. I wanted to go to first block, third block, fourth block, whatever it is. I will come here, distribute the page and click wherever I wanted it to go. If it was just to one person there, cross notebook here. So basically you just get there by clicking on that task notebook um, tab at the top. It opens up to wherever it is that you want it to go. You can see the names of the notebooks here. And if you've got different sections or things spread out, you can go ahead and do that. Click on whatever section it is and wherever it is that you would want it to go, right? Do the same thing individually. Once you do that, you'll be able to see um, what section it has been, been moved to, okay? So let's say I wanted to move it to an ACT section, yada, yada. You'll see the notebook thinking for you and then It'll be there. You'll be able to see it sync within seconds, honestly. And sometimes I just have my students kind of refresh and you can see those things there. So we do the same thing with reviewing work too. If I tell them to label their notebook page a certain kind of way, they will all put it on there. Let's say we're doing a Duolingo assignment. So let's say, um, go ahead and call your notebook page uh, Duolingo 
Monday and put the date for Monday on there. I will already have a template there, or if they call it that page, I don't have to worry about building a template because I don't feel like doing all that anyway. If it's time, it's too it's too time consuming. So if they call it a certain thing for me, I will quickly be able to go to where it says review student work. I go to wherever section it is I told them to put it. And then um, let's see, it was a quiz section. I would go wherever it is, and then wherever it is they have it lined up, I will be able to find exactly that thing. So obviously, I haven't put one in there for a while for you to be able to see that. But if I had a student and that were the case, I would just tell them, label it this way. Um, everybody call it this one page. And then that way, it's a lot easier for the teacher to go back in and do it. OK, so lengthy the explanation, but a couple of ones. Mm -hmm. How do you drop paragraphs and picks in? For instance, I just started a new job. We're virtually training. We have a virtual learning guy and everyone is talking about cutting and dropping things into their one note and I know nothing. Ah, boom, boom. I hooked you up already. I gave you a little how-to section. So this one is a drag and drop or a copy and paste. Usually a copy and paste because I know with Max, I think you can kind of drag it over there and just dump it. But this one is just a copy and paste and it makes it so simple. So in this little how-to section, I gave you a couple of things like the windows keys, adding emojis and things. The emojis are the, you know, the little icons that I hear on the side, the little windows key uh, shortcut. Screenshots are big. So easy screenshot, window shift S to be able to dump what it is that you have there. Let's say I wanted to go ahead and put this from a YouTube video, a Bitmoji video. I can easily dump it onto the page. So let's open up a new one. Let's just do a fresh page so that we can see this one. All right. And we'll just call this one the live example. This is a brand new page that you guys are, you know, you're, you're creating for yourself. So I have a picture. Let's say I have the picture of this one, right? I see Dr. Alexander here is my little pin for the um, pin for the Zoom. Control, or excuse me, Windows Shift S. I want to screenshot her and I want her to be on my page, right? I come back over here and it's just a Control V. I'm done, right? Then you just type anywhere on the screen, whatever you want to say, okay? Whatever you want to say. You can do the same thing for Google. You can do the same thing for uh, images that you find or you can actually insert them as well. So let's say, okay, I wanna, let's say somebody sent me a document. You sent me a PDF or I scanned something. I had a whole worksheet I didn't create, but it's already tangible on paper. How do I get that inside of my class notebook? I will come back over to insert, which is also on that how-to page. I will come back over onto insert and I will come to file. Now you can do a file printout or you can do an attachment. Obviously, the attachment is just what we see, like with the little paper clip that is there, right? The whole document doesn't come. It just has that little thumbnail that says it's a Word document or it's a PDF. But what if I don't want to, I don't want to have my students print all that stuff out. Like, I don't want to print all that paper out again. I don't want my faculty members to look at that. I want them to see it right there on the paper. So I'm going to do what's called a file printout instead. So let me see if I have anything in my downloads available for that one. Uh, I don't know if I have any PDFs. How about this one? That's the one that I dropped for you the other day. So I came up with something in Canva. I saved it as a PDF, but this could be any PDF, a Word document, right? Convert it over to a PDF that you don't want them to write on. Here it is. I'm going to do a Word document as well. Select the PDF. Go ahead and hit enter. And it opens up right into your OneNote, okay? Opens up right into your OneNote document. Now, I don't know if I was in mine. I had to be in this one. Thank you. Okay, so the icon is still there. And then your PDF is also still there. And so usually, let's say I had fill ins on this one, I could just have students right off to the side. Okay, students right off to the side. And then they actually write onto or type onto the document by dragging it over. So if you had fill ins, for example, I type it in, I can maybe highlight it. So it's going to be a little bit easier to see. Okay. And then I'm just going to take this little piece and drag it onto the PDF. Let's say I had to fill in the blank somewhere down here, you know, whatever it is, you can make your OneNote a living document for each of those students. And then once you do that, just like we talked about a second ago, you distribute the page to everybody. Or I've done this before where I come up with something on my OneNote and I just PDF it or screenshot that page or just make it into a PDF and deliver that, you know, to, to faculty or staff. You can do the same thing with this. This is an attachment or this is the printout file. You can also do the same thing for that Word document. So you can um, go back up into insert. 
I can do the attachment. I can do the printout as well. Let's say I wanted to put that calendar that is there that we saw here. Let me see if I'm just doing a February calendar. Boom. Opens up and it's a live document right there. So I hope that helped. All right. Everyone, that could thank you now. so much. Yay. And we have one more question. I want an example of a template to use with students, especially pre-K, but also for maybe all grades. Pre-K, but also all grades, just any kind of template? Um, Guessing so. Yeah, I would think you you may just end up having to build one for yourself, but if you find one, if you find any kind of template, it would be inside of that insert, going back into that insert and hitting on the template, right? Page templates. So that how-to is there. Remember that one. Page templates, finding something that you kind of like. You can look up more page templates here. And it gives you a ton of ideas. They have decorative templates, right? And that's what I told you. When I just start clicking on stuff, it opens up to an untitled page and it shows you exactly what it is. So you can just go down the line. There are templates that have to do with academia. So lecture notes, even though you have the little stuff, but they have these already embedded too. Math and science, history class. They're not all that pretty, <laughs> okay, for razzle dazzle, but they are there. So if you are interested in the whole app smash thing, I would say probably do your own template yourself, um, save it and build it the way that you want, and then distribute that one. You'll probably do better uh, creating something yourself, I would say, uh, especially if, you know, you might be like me, like, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want somebody else's stuff. Like I want it to be mine and I want it to look, you know, for me. So I would say go back into that how-to section um, or go back into the planning and then see how you walk through on how to build your own template to save that. Yeah. And then you can come up with stuff like this one, huh? Like a little weekly agenda, whatever it is, because I've done I've done other ones. Now, I didn't save the other ones for my classes as templates um, inside of OneNote, which I guess I should have done now that I think about that. It's funny. I, I saved it as templates to distribute to my students, but I didn't save it as an actual page template within OneNote. So those are things to consider. You know, I come up with different templates that I have for the students themselves. And those videos that I did plop in there, making your pages a little bit more aesthetically uh, appeasing for your students, they understand colors, they understand graphs and charts. So when you say you use um, uh, a PowerPoint and they have the, I forget what you call it inside PowerPoint though, you have all the little shapes. So you can do it inside of Canva and come up with one of those nice background templates in Canva. You're just gonna dump it into this one and then just save that as a template too, you know, but you can build, you can build whatever it is that you wanna build. So these are certain things that I found before. One of the ladies who I follow on Instagram has a choice board sort of like activity kind of rubric that we use when we do our writing. But I went on and added a couple of tables, color coded some things, gave the students a space to be able to, you know, type in and write whatever it is that they have. So I would say you're probably gonna end up building something on your own, which I think is a beautiful thing, you know, and you just drop your bitmojis or, you know, color code it however you wanna be able to do it. Drop links in there, uh, embed links so that they pop up the same way. We did this one as a final exam too, something that is so simple. Cause sometimes I don't want, I don't wanna get caught up in all the bell and whistle that we don't understand the content of it all. But, you know, sometimes it is okay to get pretty, you know, sometimes it is okay to get lost in those things. So just a couple of ideas of the ones that I have that I never saved. So it's, it's weird. I'm glad that you said that, but, you know, I have a ton of templates, but I did not save them into OneNote as your own template. So I would probably say you're going to end up building your own and then kind of saving. Okay. Building your own and then kind of saving. <clears throat> Great questions. Great questions. Um, and then when you do play around with uh, Canva, this is an infographic template size, but you can always resize this too. You can resize this and open it up as a, as a worksheet, as a presentation, as a shucks, as an Instagram post or as a flyer. Remember in Canva, you can do a ton of stuff too. So you can size it the way that you want there and insert it right back in here. You can do it in here, resize it over there. It doesn't really matter. The sky is the limit, whatever you're playing around with. So you got a couple of things, a couple of bonus things to play around with too, okay? Um, and I think you guys kind of jumped the gun with those, which is awesome. So I left this one a few shortcuts that you were talking about renaming pages, 
learning how to create the tables to make it a little bit more appealing, moving sections up and down. So if you're if you don't like something that you created, delete it. <laughs> All right. Or move it, tweak it however you want it. It's no there's no right or wrong way. There's no way that is set in stone. So all the pages that I have over here for you, let's say, for example, oh, man, I don't feel like shortcuts being there first. OK, take it bring it all the way down to where you want it to be. And now it has changed the order. So not that anybody else is looking at your page, but if you're sharing it, for example, with students, you can do that. So you notice this change on the side over here. And when you update it on your end and then you share it with the masses, it will change for them as well. It takes a little time to sync, but it will be the exact same thing. All right, so I do that a lot with students as well. If I don't, you know, if I didn't like um, the outline or if I tell them to go back in and, hey, I want you guys to, Organize the dates in your notebook. Go ahead and put the most recent date on top and then come all the way down. It should be nice and easy, right? Nice and easy. You can make it however it is that you want to make it. Um, that leads me into the last little portion where the little bonus things are, because one of the things that I enjoy creating the most are uh, digital escape rooms. And I use Microsoft EDU to be able to do that. I use a OneNote class notebook to create digital escape rooms. And so one of the final pages that you notice over here is a bunch of links to um, breakout rooms. So here are a few to get you going that I saved um, inside of Wakelet. So this is a Wakelet link that'll take you there. These are ones that I was given not too long ago, just from a, oh no, these are down here, came from Ditch Book Chat that I was just a part of that Carly um, Morris sent me. And I was just like, yeah, this is the hookup right here. Just a ton of Google escape rooms already. And then here are ones that I created. So you can, you got a ton of stuff to be able to play around with. And the way that I do an escape room is pretty much you create the page that you want. Of course, the time process is, is really only like five or 10 minutes, honestly, to create a room. But the thought process that goes behind the links that you want to do, the codes and the, you know, the creativity or the words that you want your students to come up with, that's the thought process that really goes into it. But to physically create the digital escape room, easy peasy, it only takes a second. And maybe that could be, you know, something else that we talk about on another day. But I gave you some links to play around with here. Have at it. See ones that I created. See ones that others have created and curated. And, um, you know. My little phrase here, I don't think you'd be in too much of a pickle <laughs> with these, so have fun. Um, you got a couple of bonus things here with the YouTube channels. These are some more excellent resources on Microsoft tools, on OneNote themselves, on getting started. You have Mike Tholfson, who does a lot, a ton of stuff with Microsoft, obviously, a ton of videos that are very helpful. The gentleman that I told you about earlier, those three videos that I left for you, these come from them, uh, everything OneNote. And then this young lady is also part of the Microsoft community, uh, MIE expert community, who has a ton of videos, not just on OneNote, but on everything helpful within Microsoft. Um, so all of those things you can put inside of this notebook. So I hope that those are some pretty good resources. When I talk about embedding links, you just take the live link, pop it right there, and everything is a go. It just is live. You know what I mean? It's just It just makes so much sense to me to be able to use things that are useful and helpful and easy because nobody wants to be confused. Nobody wants to spend a ton of time doing things. And this tool, guys, honestly can help you to do that. So I hope that you you know, were able to walk away with some, some good ideas and some ways on how I use it, but on maybe how you can use it with your faculty and staff within your education community or just within your personal life to see what's going on with OneNote. So that's it for me. I hope that you got it. And I would love to answer any more questions that you have, but this resource obviously is available to you. And um, I'm always willing to, to share what it is that I have and um, you know keep the conversation going. So let me know if you have any other comments or questions and I'm here for that. Okay, well, let's open it up to questions. So I did make it where you can unmute yourself. We also have, of course, the chat that you can type your question in. Um, if you unmute yourself, excuse me, please just wait for me to say your name just so we're not all talking um, at the same time. So either just raise your hand or just unmute and I'll see it. And uh, I'll call your name and you can ask your question. So we do have one from the chat while we're waiting on anyone else. My students have iPads in the class. Any experience trouble I should watch out for when using iPads? Mm, I'm not too familiar with iPads and what they offer. We have uh, Windows or Dell notebooks. And at one point we had Chromebooks, but that was for elementary. I'm not too sure with iPads. I would say 
probably just to have everything kind of run through your tech department and they would probably block anything that you didn't need or, you know, make sure that the students at that level didn't have access to whatever it is. But as things come up, um, stay vigilant in what it is that you're sharing and, and what they can see. I do, for some students, if we were using, let's say I wasn't using my own personal and obviously you're talking about for the classroom, let's say I'm using one of the class notebooks, I would use more of the collaboration space and have a good idea or share with them exactly what the collaboration space is about and how we use it and how that, you know, some people can put certain things there. You can take away from what others placed. So I would have probably one of those conversations to say, you know, talking about digital citizenship, making sure that you don't take anybody else's credit or that you don't, you know, destroy what somebody else has put together. Um, one of the main things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see last call for any questions. Okay, we do have one. If I drop a pic, let's say the way you did Dr. Desiree Alexander's profile pic, can I then edit, crop, move that pic? Okay, so let's do a fresh page and let's say we're gonna do a Google one. Um, you should be able to, so let's just do our logo. You're not gonna be able to edit it because it is just like it's a screenshot. So, Let's just say I come on over, control V to paste it in there. Now you can move it wherever you want to move it, right? Because OneNote is like that. I can move the image wherever it is that I want it to go. Um, and I can duplicate it. The cool thing about it is though, when you, let's say for like the example, the, the bitmojis that you see that I placed all around there, you can't touch it because I lock them. So if you want to move one or you want to create a little table, and then plop it in there, you can definitely do that. And that makes it a little bit easier to get around too, right? But if I didn't want to, and I just wanted to place it somewhere else, I can, and then I can also lock it, right? I could lock it or set it as a background. That's usually what people tend to do as well. Mm -hmm. And that way, nobody can touch it. So can I trim it or, or crop it? You can crop it, I think by right clicking, but I think you have to be, which is so weird, you have to be in the browser app because I don't think I ever cropped in the desktop app, which is really weird. So let me see if I can crop it in the browser. And I don't think you guys have this one. Untitled page in the planning section. Untitled page in the planning section. Let me see if that happened to you real quick. Untitled page in the planning section. So see how it takes a bit to sync there. You guys have that live app. Let's see, untitled page. Oh, but this is my link to you. All right, so if I right click on it, no. Mm -mm. Certain images that you have, certain images you have, like if I dropped a Bitmoji, I could crop a Bitmoji or I could crop, um, it'll show you, it's really weird. Obviously this one you can, I wonder if it's just because it's a logo, I don't know. But yeah, certain ones you can. Let's see if I add one. Let's see, let's see. Copy. You don't want to paste on there because it's open. Let's see. Mm -mm. Rotate. Mm -mm. Certain, certain ones come up with the example that is there. They come up with a, uh, and you can see it, it's a little black crop sign. But if it doesn't allow you, it must be either that image that's not allowing you to or whatever permission that is. But I can't see it for now. I've done it before, but I know I have not done it in the desktop app. I've only cropped in the uh, web browser app, but not all the time. Good question, not all the time. Okay, let's last call for any questions. You can either unmute yourself or you can throw it in the chat. Last call for questions. Those are really good questions. Mm -hmm. Can you embed a wakelet into a OneNote page? Oh yeah, that's what I hook you up with. That's in the bonus tab. I got you. 
So awakening is there. I can put that link there. But embed, you say, is on that second page. So inside this tab that says bonus stuff, it is a Microsoft embed. And all you do is go to the link at the top of the page and drop it. So this is what your embed will look like once you drop that onto the page, a live document of whatever it is that you put. So this is a link to Wakelet and it is here embedded inside of OneNote. So live example, name it, go to whatever it is that you have that you want to embed, Word document, uh, Microsoft form, Google form, whatever it is. Okay, and whatever link that it is that you have and plop it there. You're gonna take a look at the top of the screen. Don't mind that I have a gazillion wakelets, guys. <laughs> okay, so sorry. All right, that's what you call when you just dump 30,000 things in there. It's okay. All right. So let's say, I don't know. Okay, let's say I wanted to share the games with you. So I'm gonna to come to this collection and this is the link up top that you want to embed. So you just go to the search link, go back into it. Okay, you say practice embed. And paste it. Now you can either hit enter or not, but usually I hit enter to make sure that it's there but it is all right and there it is everything that i have in my wiggler collection Boom. easy peasy ding, ding, ding. <laughs> all right people are very excited <laughs> good i'm glad that's exciting it just makes it so simple guys and i know that sometimes it kind of seems like overwhelming when you're using these things but honestly i think i come from the notion of just jumping in so even if you're just like man, i don't know what you're talking about i don't know how to do that just try one thing just maybe try to create the account maybe that's how far you got this day and that was good enough i'm good with that whatever you're good with i'm good with and then the next time build it onto something else okay this time i want to build a different section or this time i want to add a bit more to the section or this time i want to embed something or this time i want to change the color of the section whatever it is that you got get you just practice, have a good time at it. It's your notebook. You can do whatever it is that you want. That's what I tell my students all the time because they get on me about being able to use your phone. Ah, Ms. Taylor, it's easy for me to use my phone. I don't feel like writing and the next day they feel like writing or I don't want to take a picture the next day they don't take a picture. Fine, get you whatever you want. All I know is the proof should be inside of the class notebook. So we're writing something, we're doing a dictation drill, we're doing um, um, I think out the box Thursday, whatever it is where they have to draw stuff and do videos for me, which I did not share. Let me share that with you real quick. So let's say, for example, we're doing a, a writing task, right? Okay. I have them. I want to write on a sheet of paper. Fine. Get your paper. Write on it. Use your phone. Take your picture. Plop it in there. Okay. I can do the same thing with the app. All they have to do is plop it in there. It just makes it so simple. But you also have these tools up here that I didn't even touch on. All we touched on was the file printout and the file attachment. But you do have links that you can embed, online pictures, online video. And this is the part that I love the most when I'm, when I'm talking to students or I'm getting hear things from them. We can use Flipgrid. We love Flipgrid all the time. We use Moat as well. Well, not as much. I use Flipgrid most. Okay, but you can record audio and video within the class notebook too. So I'll get them to share with me. All they do is push the video recording, push the audio recording. Some of them have done many skits for me, many conversations with their classmates. And then you have an ongoing conversation with that individual student right within their notebook. I drop a progress report section for them inside of their notebook. I print from our um our on-campus or J-campus uh, system for progress reports and give them their own individual progress report as a printout inside of their notebook. And then on the side, I'll plop down a little conversation with them or I'll, you know, drop a sticker in there or give some type of reflection on, you know, what is it that you enjoy most about this marking period so far about this semester or, you know, how was I supportive or what can you do differently or what's your one word 2022 and how has that affected, you know, your grade, you can have some real conversations and, you know, back and forth with those individual students within their own notebook and it's so, it's so easy and it's so beneficial. 
So that's it. Use it. Tell me when you use it. Tag me. <laughs> All right. Thank you again for a wonderful webinar. Oh, um, so thank you. Like, seriously, as always, very informational. And you gave so many resources that they can go back and, you know, do stuff on their own time. So just thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.